Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. On behalf of the Bayer team, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you to our regional webinar. This is the first session we're hosting. To those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Zapiao, and I work with the Bayer Environmental Science Marketing Team here in Singapore. Um, for those of you who remember who I am, um, hello again. Um, it's nice to see you a bit virtually. Now, I may appear alone on screen, but I can assure you that um, there's a team behind working um, tirelessly to ensure the session runs smoothly. As you have witnessed, um, Dave actually came in to save the day and reminded that um, the microphone is not working properly. So, um, as mentioned earlier, this is our first regional webinar, and we will be talking about formulation technology. So, how many of you listening in? Um, remember what kind of formulation to use for which kind of surfaces. What are the differences between an EC or an SC formulation? If you have those questions, you're in, for, you're in luck because that's what we will be discussing today. Our expert today is Dr. Walker Goodsman. He has joined us in bioenvironmental science since 2002. It is almost 20 years of um, experience. He's currently responsible for global product development in the area of professional pest management. And he's currently based in Monheim, Germany. So before we begin, um, just a little bit of housekeeping. This webinar is scheduled for approximately 45 minutes with a 15 minute presentation, followed by a live Q&A session. For those of you who are not quite familiar with this platform, um, the audio and video of attendees are disabled, but we invite you to ask your questions in the Q&A chat box that you can find on the right of your screen. Um, for those of you using smart devices, please find the question mark icon on the top right of your device. The session will be recorded and shared with the registered attendees um, in about 48 hours after this webinar ends. Okay. So without further ado, I will invite Dr. Walker Goodsman to give his presentation. Hello, my name is Volker Goodsman and I work as a product development manager at Bayer Environmental Science in Germany in Monheim. Monheim is one of our three development hubs uh, in environmental science. As almost everyone in the world, I'm locked down because of the pandemic. And like you, I'm trying to keep things going from home. Using this format, we would like to stay in touch with you and discuss points that matter in our pest control industry. Today, I would like to talk about formulation technology, especially on formulations for residual surface sprays. Why is this topic so important? Formulation technology brings chemistry to life. Without formulation technology, an active substance will just not work. Only with formulation technology, an active substance becomes usable, robust and stable. It is key for performance and separates good products from mediocre products. Over the decades, a series of formulation types of liquid spray formulations have been developed. I'm sure you have used quite a number of them in your lifetime. And although they may contain the same active ingredient, such as deltamethrine or any other pyrethroids, they will perform totally different if you use them on different, in different situations. this slide, I have selected for you uh, six product types. All of them are still on the market today. Uh, and I'm sure that you have used several of them already in your own um, uh, uh, company. We have here the, the first group are the EC, the emulsifiable concentrate and the EW, em emulsion in water. They are really characterized by the uh, addition of solvents to the formulation. The EC formulation is completely solvent based. 
The EW formulation is partly solvent based, uh, but both of them have the, the backdrop that they are penetrating into surfaces, especially on wood or, or cement. Uh, sorptive so surfaces um, on, on those, these products tend to disappear into the surface and, and uh, performance is sometimes uh, compromised through that. However, they are relatively cheap to produce and easy to dilute. The second group here that I would like to explain are capsule suspensions and suspension concentrates. Both of them are slightly more modern, although they have also some mileage on the clock already. Um, but generally, they provide a very good overall efficacy and they are robust on most surfaces. Um, drawback here is that they need to be uh, highly viscous because they contain particles that may sediment uh, in the bottle. So they need to have a high viscosity and this uh, makes it necessary that they are shaken up before dilution and that dilution itself requires a little bit more care and time than the first two products here. The WGWP are two products um, which um, are the water dispersible granules and granules and wettable powder. They are really characterized by a very good robustness on, on the most challenging surfaces. Uh, they are also provide um, a, a long residuality on, on those surfaces. However, they are normally dry, they are dried. That means that they have to be weighed out before dilution. And especially the WPs leave visible residues on shiny surfaces. The last one here, uh, based on particle technology, is a relatively new formulation type, which is characterized by an overall good efficacy and the widest uh, range of surfaces that can be treated with this formulation type. Um, and um, um, the benefit of this one really is that it does not leave um, uh, residues that can be detected by, by yourself or customers. So you have seen huge differences in these product types. Some do contain solvents, others not. Some have particles, others not. They are even dry and liquid concentrates. But why do these differences matter so much? They matter because product performance varies greatly depending which surface you are treating. You will see now in the next slides why size matters. Here are the six formulation types again. What happens to those concentrates upon dilution in water? The solvent-based products will form an active substance containing emulsion. These droplets are very small. In all the other product types, particles containing AI will float freely in the dilution. However, their size can be very different. Typically starting from one to two micron, the particles in the last product is around 10 micron. Why should this matter? Because you spray these dilutions on rough surfaces. Here and magnification under the electron microscope showing you a cement surface. Imagine what happens to those small particles. I guess you agree that they will disappear into those cracks and pores. And if they disappear, they cannot interact with any pest that comes across that treated surface. And performance is reduced. If we now understand that the size of the particle that delivers efficacy is crucial for the performance on a given surface, then how relevant is this to you and the jobs that you have to perform? We have conducted a survey amongst pest control operators on the frequency that they treat different types of surfaces. And indeed, about 80 to 90% of surfaces that our customers treat are rough and porous. Brick, cement, wood 
are amongst the most frequently named surfaces. So where do you find brick, cement and wood surfaces? I believe in commercial situations or in outdoor situations, the likelihood that you, that you have to treat those surfaces is very high. Here in this animation, I show you that, for instance, a floor surface is actually not smooth at all. Yeah, it looks like a mountain range. Wooden surfaces are equally horrible, containing cracks and pores. And brick walls are even, even more horrible, providing a lot of cracks and pores where small AI particles can disappear. And as I said earlier, once the AI particles are out of sight, they cannot, they cannot uh, transfer the lethal effect onto passing insects. So we are close to the end of this little presentation. I hope the information you received here helped you to select the right product for your jobs. If the majority of surfaces that you treat are rough and absorptive, then a product with larger particle size will deliver the best results for you. If the surfaces are sealed, then smaller particle sizes will also work, but beware of visible residues that show up mostly on sealed shiny surfaces. The formulation types, suspension concentrate SC and WG, water dispersible granules, are normally representing a good compromise between robustness and absence of visible residues. The new formulation type based on particle technology will work on the most challenging surfaces whilst not leaving any stains. I hope you find this interesting. I hope this situation will improve soon so that we can go about our real job. Until then, take care, best of luck for the future and thanks for listening. Right. Thank you, Dr. Goodsman, for an enlightening session on formulation technology. We will now move to our Q&A session. Um, while we wait for Dr. Goodsman to be beamed up on his video, let's have a look and see what questions we've received so far. Yeah, good afternoon from Germany. It's uh, early morning uh, here in Germany, and I think for for you in in uh, in Asia, it's it's already getting into the afternoon. Um, I've received uh, a question that uh, I, I think is a good question to uh, kick off the Q and A, and I hope that you are uh, dynamic and um, and enter more questions as we discuss. The first question was, does formulation type have an impact on shelf life? Um, normally, I would say that the duration of activity of the active ingredient in a residual spray formulation uh, is not reduced in certain uh, formulation types. However, what we see is that some products uh, that contain uh, particles, um, um, uh, sediment, and then you have to resuspend them. Cheaper products uh, that are not formulated well tend to form a sort of cake after a storage, uh, which is very hard to resuspend. So, so I would say that uh, the stability or the activity of the active ingredient is normally not compromised in storage, but the, the behavior of the formulation itself can vary. And a good formulation will be resuspended more easily than a bad formulation. Yeah. There's another question here. Is particle technology formulation type uh, approved by WHO and FIO? And what is the code? 
Um, this is a, a very good question that we are discussing also heavily internally. We believe that the particle technology is a unique type that could uh, be contained in a, in a unique uh, um, code for the time being because it's a particle that is in suspension. Um, we have to name it uh, suspension concentrate, so particles um, is a, um, um, a product that is called uh, SC, yeah. And uh, but we, as I explained to you, the um, the formulation um, uh, concept here is totally different from um, a crystalline AI. So questions coming in rapidly now. Yeah. Um, Dr. Volker, there's one question yeah. on. Which is the better internal residual spray for mosquitoes, WP or SC? Um, for indoor, um, uh, both products, of course, have a very good um, indoor residuality um, um, characteristics for mosquitoes. WPs are very, very much used in uh, vector control yeah, for indoor residual sprays. Um, I believe that SCs can uh, can also perform well, but remember, in in some in some indoor residual malaria or uh, mosquito control programs, surfaces are quite rough, and uh, as I said, that um, 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 rough surfaces need larger particles. So, uh, in, for instance, in malaria control in Africa, the, um, the, the most common uh, pr product type there um, is, is a WP because they're dealing a lot on, on very, very, very uh, 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 complex surfaces. In Asia, I believe indoor spraying is more urban indoor spraying and, and, and therefore I would say that an SC or a particle formulation type is also performing very well. Okay. Um, as, as we all know, the accessibility to sites is now a big, a big issue around the world mm -hmm. for a lot of the PCOs. Mm -hmm. so, so if a PCO have to choose one formulation, you know, in, in, in concern of, of cost uh, contingency, so would you rec which, which formulation would you recommend that lasts the longest with the best flexibility? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think that is a very common question also in, in Europe and in, in, other, in other areas. Sometimes areas that you need to treat are difficult to access and you have to work hard to get into those crawl spaces or um, um, canals or um, uh, other uh, areas that are used by, by insects to, 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 to travel or to hide. Um, as it is really hard to get into those spaces. I believe a, a product that is robust and lasts longest is, is, is the best product to choose because it reduces your effort to deliver your treatment. In those areas, I think an EC or EW formulation will, will be suboptimal because it is um, easily absorbed on the surface. It's easily dusted over as well. Um, so I would say that for for areas that are difficult to reach and you want to minimize the the um, uh, the number of visits there, uh, you should use uh, um, a, a premium product uh, with a tested uh, long uh, residuality. Um, our products from Bayer, we all our products are tested for up to three months and we guarantee performance up to three months. That's also a requirement uh, during uh, registration and um, the submission of the dossier to authorities. Uh, we do know, however, that uh, on, on, on surfaces that are not extreme, we can see efficacy even after uh, six months or so. So, but if you go on, on really horrible surfaces like uh, freshly built concrete, which is uh, really alkaline, then then of course this is uh, maybe not possible. But on most surfaces, uh, we guarantee three months for our products. And um, but we know that even afterwards the um, uh, performance is still there, but maybe not to 100% or 90%. Okay. Another question from Sopian. 
Um, his question, his or her question is, what is a good formulation of pest control product if applied on the surface of plants? That is a difficult question for me because uh, officially, if you apply a product on plants, um, then you are also getting into the regulatory framework of uh, plant protection. I know that sometimes we are treating plants in order to um, um, hit the mosquitoes that's hiding uh, uh, on plants. So you, it's not actually plant protection, but it's it's um, uh, pest control with plant material as a surface. Um, but but normally, um, I would say it's. It, it's really plant dependent. Uh, some plants have a very waxy, smooth surface, and if you spray them with water, and you may have seen this, um, that the water is actually not um, uh, con uh, retained on the plant surface, but drips away. This is not a an issue for the formulation. This is um, a characteristic of the plant itself. Um, I would say that um, a, 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 a formulation that sticks on the plant that you are treating the best gives you the best results. Um, I, I think I cannot say you this formulation type or the other, um, 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 but if you, if, if, if you check out options and you see a formulation that runs off the plant leaf immediately, then of course there's no action. So give it a try. Beware that some of the solvent based uh, um, formulations may cause phytotoxicity so that the plant is dead afterwards. And this is also something you probably want to avoid. OK, mm -hmm. cool. Um, another question and what is the example of product for particle technology? Yes, particle technology is something that um, Bayer has um, uh, developed uh, recently. Um, it is a, a new product that has not been rolled out on a global scale. Um, uh, the product um, is sold in uh, the United States uh, under the brand name um, Barricor. Um, and it's already launched in Australia with the brand name um, um, Suspend Flex. Uh, so we are at the moment in the process of uh, launching or rolling this out uh, globally. Um, um, I think in Asia it's probably uh, um, on the way. It's not there yet, but on the way. Yeah. So so you have to. Um, um, check out the catalogs and the Bayer uh, homepages for for news on, on on that product. Okay, and on top of that uh, question, there is another question that is related to particle application. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, if if this uh, particle pro formulation has already obtained pre qualification from WHO. Um, currently, we are not planning to go into um, um, uh, uh, qualifying through the WHO for uh, for the particle formulation. We we have uh, specific products for um, vector control um, uh, with the WHO. Um, uh, we have K-Othrin, uh, the K-Othrin family that's uh, pre-qualified. We have also now launched uh, Fludora Fusion in, 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 in for malaria control in Africa. These are specific formulations for malaria control um, that also take a special view on, on, on resistance, uh, but Partix itself is a, a, a product that's dedicated for the pest control industry and we are not planning to go through uh, a PQ. Okay. Right. This this next question has five thumbs up from the audience. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is the best formulation for a common building combined of different surfaces? For example, tiles, cement, wooden material, and brick. So it's a one size yes. fit all. Formulation. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's a good question because that's reality for, for most of you out there. Um, uh, only a few are specializing on a certain 
uh, a business. So, so what you really need is an all rounder. You want a product that performs on rough surfaces. You want also a product that uh, can be uh, applied on um, shiny surfaces without leaving residues or stains. So, so I believe SC formulations are um, WG or the particle technology formulations are really good for this um, because they they offer a, a broad range of coverage on the surfaces without leaving stains. Um, ECEW formulations have their have their um, um, use. They, they are very important um, I believe for certain areas of work. Um, but if you want an all-rounder that you can, uh, where you can prepare your sprayer and 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 you can assume that it will work all the day, then SCWG or uh, will be a, a very good choice for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. There is this very interesting question about um, customers of the PCOs wanting some form of dry technique. So, is there any dry technique out there? And the following question to that is um, whether there is any nano pesticide that Bayer is researching towards. So, two questions from this person. Yeah, can you please go back to the first question? Dry? I I, I didn't I didn't uh, catch that. So, I'm I'm assuming the request from the customer of the PCO is they want a formulation that doesn't involve liquid. So okay. a dry, dry technique of application. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a dry. I mean, traditionally, a dry uh, product is a dust. Yeah, uh, that that is um, a, a product type that that can be applied without the use of water. And I firmly believe that dust is is a is a very very good um, uh, element of your toolbox. I, I tend to believe more and more that a PCO uh, requires a toolbox of options that he can choose in certain uh, situations. And in my eyes, a dust is part of that. Um, imagine you have to treat um, areas with electricity or cables um, and or you have um, uh, hollows and voids that you want to treat from the inside without bringing moisture into the structure, then a dust is a very, very good um, uh, product because you can puff it with special equipment into these areas that are moisture sensitive. Um, the second question about nanoparticles, I, I, um, at the moment we are um, uh, not going into nanotechnology. Um, as you has, have heard from my presentation, we, in the opposite, we believe that larger particles will deliver a more robust uh, um, um, uh, performance. Um, nanoparticles, I think, are. Um, I, I need to understand why this should be important. Um, um, nanoparticles have their own ecotox issues with um, um, being found in waters and surface water. So I, at the moment, we have no um, uh, research program on nanoparticles. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there is one question that is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. They're all interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my personally okay. well, my personal interest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, what is the best formulation to use on sewers where cockroaches harbor? Because you know, in yeah. sewers there's there's a lot of moisture and then there's this constant water flowing in the drains. Yeah. Um, so what kind of formulation would you recommend in such situation? Oh, that's <laughs> That's not only interesting, that's also very, uh, it's a tough question. Um, um, I mean, sewers is, um, for me as a developer, um, looking into options for sewers, uh, that's a really uh, a critical area. Um, it's, it's not only because of the, um, the, um, the specific situation on, uh, moisture, uh, warmth, um, abrasiveness, 
it's also a question on ecotox issues in 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 many uh, countries of the world sewer treatments are really not possible because the the active ingredient that you introduce in the sewer systems will go straight to the to the uh, 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 water plants that that uh, um, uh, recycle the water um, but if you really if if in your region this method of uh, applying um, um, product into sewer systems um, for cockroaches then of course there is um, you can spray the uh, the exit areas of the sewers with a product that is uh, robust and long lasting uh, i also know from some countries in the world that are using uh, cockroach cockroach baits uh, around the uh, the um, 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 sewer exits uh, as cockroaches that come out uh, from the sewers will find these baits and and eat it but you need a lot of it and it's also often uh, prone to wash off so i i must admit that i can give it can't give you a um, um a definite answer on what is the best product um, it's it's a regulatory question what products are allowed in that context um, and and also how much wash off will is likely to occur uh, and and uh, but consider uh, robust um, uh, particle uh, containing uh, formulations for this or even the use of baits that you can use uh, uh, in, in, in large quantities around the um, exits of the sewers. I hope I could answer this question. This is a tricky question. Yeah, and, and not everybody <laughs> yeah. in the audience will be very happy <laughs> with that answer. But oh, this okay. is uh, the, the best I can do. Yeah. You're doing great. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, this, this one also has uh, quite a lot of thumbs up. Um, so this, the question goes like this. We did have residual spraying in a customer's house and mm -hmm. the technician accidentally sprayed SC formulation on the wallpaper and left, and left a stain, which is similar to a watermark. Yes. And then, of course, that is um, not removable. Yes. Um, how do you explain that phenomena? How can we tell the customers um, what happened? Well, I think if you spray wallpaper, uh, you can probably spray um, with water on a wallpaper and the paper will uh, will uh, take up the water it will um, it will probably um, uh, reduce the the glue uh, behind the wallpaper and then you get uh, wrinkles and 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 uh, bubbles here and and watermarks i i believe that that this is not it's not always a product uh, or formulation issue, uh, this uh, like like wood marks. If you spray wood uh, with a liquid and you have marks afterwards, it's not always a product failure. It could just be that you use water um, uh, on a on a surface that reacts not favorably to water. Um, I always recommend to customers that if they are not sure whether a product they're using is is acceptable or can can be used that they try it first in an area where where the effects are not so dramatic so don't start uh, right in the living room uh, in a uh, where everybody can see it start in a corner somewhere uh, and and see does is my my product that i'm using uh, causing any concern later on I, I think that is a really safe um, um, a method to avoid problems afterwards give it a test in an area that is not so obvious first okay great um, next question I think uh, this is relevant especially right now um, what's the effect of pesticide to disinfectant and vice versa what is the proper procedure pest control first or disinfection or the other way around um, I I think that that the disinfectant that we are using today will not uh, for the pandemic will not destroy the active ingredient in 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 pesticides um, because uh, to destroy a pesticide you need um, quite um, um, a, a aggressive chemical agents and not 
um, agents that are biologically active like disinfectants. Um, uh, therefore, I think that you cannot destroy a residual spray with a disinfectant. What could happen is that you that the insect that you are targeting are, are repelled from the surface that you have treated because of the disinfectant and therefore they will not cross it anymore and then they won't die. So that is an option that you have to consider that the disinfectants uh, that you are spraying is preventing uh, target insects from crossing a surface. Uh, personally, I would say that um, 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 if you have a choice of doing this first and then the other, I would do the disinfection first, let it dry and then overspray with the with the pesticide and not the other way around. OK, sounds, sounds sensible. Right, um, next question from Pasana. Is it true that SC formulation disintegrates as soon as they come into contact with sunlight? If not, how long can they be present on the surface after we spray? Yeah, I, I think that is this statement is too too general. Um, I mean, SC formulations, um, as I tried to explain earlier, are particles that are crystals of active ingredient that are milled to a certain size. So an SC particle is a solid um, uh, active ingredient particle and therefore if you expose that to sunlight and you have in addition you have an active ingredient that is um, sensitive to sunlight then you get a, an, a degradation that is slow and can take uh, a, a long time because you are exposing a solid crystal of AI to the UV light uh, and, and you will not uh, lose everything in in an one hour or one day. Um, others, other uh, uh, formulations that create a small film, uh, uh, um, a film with, with solved molecules is probably more sensitive uh, to sunlight. Um, and uh, there is also, um, of course, the the active ingredient characteristic, whether they are photostable or not. Pyrethroids, yeah, are normally quite UV stable. That means they are not um, uh, losing um, efficacy uh, quickly. Um, I know in, in the US uh, there's a lot of outdoor treatment with delta methrin and on some products we have a 90-day guarantee. So that means that even in the outside delta methrin products can survive uh, for, for weeks and weeks. Uh, but for instance, a natural pyrethrum yeah, that, that maybe some customers are using in very sensitive areas, it's very photo, uh, uh, um, it's, it's not stable. So that will go away within days under sunlight. Okay. Now there's this question from Mike Tai that almost has uh, 20 Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so the question goes like this. Most of the PCO only take note on the active ingredient. But what actually the, what actually is the component inside, um, such as the inert ingredient that makes the chemical better than generics? Yes, um, I mean on on every bottle of chem, uh, of uh, pesticide, you see what is the active ingredient, um, and 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 that defines the um, the 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 the. the physical chemical properties of the active ingredient. So um, it's, it's like when you buy um, 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 something to eat and it says it contains um, wheat flour. Yeah, then you know wheat flour is in there, but it doesn't mean it tastes nice or it lasts long. So the everything else that is in a formulation apart from the active ingredient makes a product good or bad or unstable or stable. So the inerts that are in a formulation are normally not listed because um, there are many. Yeah, they are also often uh, trade secrets. Yeah, because we don't want our products to be copied 
um, uh, easily. So, so the the inerts that are in a formulation um, give the product the personality. I would say it 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 makes them bad, mediocre, or good, uh, and and uh, and they are not listed. And and they are not listed because there are too many. It's very chemical. Uh, it wouldn't uh, tell uh, people a lot if we list all of them. And I said there's a little element of trade secrecy uh, there as well. Is is this the way I uh, did? I understand the question correct or? Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's see. Do pesticides kill viruses? Also, <laughs> that is no, no. It's it's a it's it's, it's a it's a good question. Um, I would say no. Pesticides are uh, molecules that have been developed to interact. Most of them are interacting with the nervous system of uh, insects, so they are quite specific. They they interact with the biochemistry of insects, um, and and insects specifically. Um, so the, the 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 effect on the virus is 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 limited. Um, so you cannot assume that if you use a product that kills ants or cockroaches, also kills viruses. Right. This is a quite a basic question, but I think a lot of people might have uh, similar questions. Mm -hmm. Ask a similar question. Does the quality of water that we use to dilute the chemicals have impact on the formulation? Um, I believe it has, but of course there are there is a range of possible water qualities. The, the reason where we encountered this first was actually in malaria control, vector control, malaria col, uh, control in, in, in Africa, because often uh, the spray teams are taking water from natural water from uh, from lakes or rivers, and and of course this uh, we 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 tested how much influence a product performance has when you take a wide range of of of, of uh, water quality. I believe in in Asia a, a lot of water is tap water, so it's coming. It comes out of a water system that is uh, controlled uh, and 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 normally in a, in a in a in a good um, a quality. And their variations uh, in water quality mostly um, um, uh, tend to uh, touch the pH of of the of the water and the mineral content. So you can have soft water and hard water with minerals uh, in it, or you can have water that is uh, slightly acidic and slightly alkaline, although um, um, these limits are quite uh, quite small. So if, if we are using tap water, I can assure you that uh, the quality of water is always good for our products. If you're using natural water that you get from natural sources, um, I think that is something that is possible. We we think it's possible, but the the other problem I see is also that you can may you get uh, um, sediments or uh, um, 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 particles from the water that may clog your your sprayer nozzle or your filters. If you if the water is is taken from sources that are dirty, then you have other problems also like uh, filter blockages and uh, blocked nozzles. Okay, so mm -hmm. maybe we take one last question before we end this, this mm -hmm. webinar. All right, so this last question sounds like this. Uh, for EW formulation at lower temperature, I could yeah. see the separation of layer and formation of solid complex. Mm -hmm. Is this based on a lack of emulsifier or just phenomenon of EW at low temperature? Um, I think that this may be a I mean it, it's a question of temperature and also duration um, if if uh, a product is uh, is uh, stored overnight in a in a situation where it's get a little bit colder um, um, it probably won't matter if you um, store this over a long time um, you you may see phase separation um, I think phase uh, a phase separation in products is not immediately 
a sign that it won't work. It, it is a sign that you have to shake it well before you reuse it. Um, and as I said also in, in one of the first uh, qu questions that I answered, um, um, that, that is also a means of separating uh, product qualities. How easy is it to get a product that has uh, that shows some kind of uh, sedimentation? How easy is it to shake it back into um, um, homogeneity? And and some are you do it you shake it for five times and it's done, and others you work on it for for a while. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So I think that's uh, we have received quite a lot of questions. Yes, yeah, so it was can't, brilliant. You can't, nice. you can't answer each and every one of them, yeah. but um, I I highly recommend that the questions that um, the attendees have, if, if we do not get the chance to answer them, um, please send them to the email address that, that yes. you see on the screen. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so before we wrap up, um, maybe Dr. Guzman, you want to say a few words to the audience today? Yes, I, I mean, I, I was very excited <laughs> before this webinar because I think it's uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea to, to um, um, reach out to uh, uh, the, the customers and our partners in the industry. Normally we see each other on trade fairs, we see each other in your offices or in our offices. Um, I do this regularly. I really like to get in contact with customers to see the other side of product development. Uh, in these days that's really hard, so I think that's a really good idea from the team to uh, to to engage in, the, uh, in, in this uh, in this way. And I think uh, um, there will be announcement that this is not the last time you see me. I mean, there will be follow ups and I really enjoyed this session and I was quite thrilled about the dynamic and the interest from 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 you guys. It was really nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kuzpin. So um, thank you once again to all the attendees today. Um, just one more thing. Uh, as a reminder, next week we will be hosting an exclusive webinar with a panel comprising of the presidents and chairperson of the Pest Control Associations in Southeast Asia. You will see the announcement on the screen. So if you have not registered yourself, please um, find a bit of time to register yourself for this session because it's a really interesting session. And um, so I think that's that's all we have for today. So thank you once again for joining us and stay safe and we'll see you again next Tuesday. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.